Okie dokie. So, I um, haven't done a live stream in a while, but I thought today, since I needed to uh, do some work on some stuff Steve's been designing, I thought it'd be fun to uh, live stream some of this stuff. And I'm going to try something quick here. I, I forgot that I bought this like fancy uh, light that kind of makes things look cool. I don't know. We'll test it out. See how it looks. See if it looks better once the light's on. Um, okay, so uh, I think what I'll start by doing is giving you sort of a brief introduction to what I'm even making, and um, then I'll sort of show you what we're going to be working on. So me and Steve have been sort of hacking on this idea of um, a Tailwind component directory as sort of a way to, uh, you know, monetize Tailwind a bit and help make development of it sustainable, something commercial that we can actually charge money for on the side of Tailwind that's sort of related so that we can still keep doing all the open source stuff and uh, being being able to afford to invest a lot of time in that. So we've been working on this prototype of um, a tool that we're calling Tailwind UI, which is basically sort of like a membership portal where you can uh, find all sorts of uh, really well-designed, pre-built examples of different Tailwind components. So a lot of this stuff is grayed out because it's not done yet. But like, for example, you can see in the forms section, we've got sign in and registration forms. So here's like an example of a sign in form. Um, you can flip over and grab all the code or whatever. And it's all like responsive. So you can see like what it actually looks like when you, uh, you know, try out all the different sizes. Um, got a bunch of different examples. Here's like a full screen one with like an image. Maybe I'll zoom this out a bit so we can kind of see a little bit better since I'm on a smaller screen resolution here. Um, yeah, so, you know, all sorts of, like, uh, responsive examples um, that are sort of designed by Steve, which is nice, because I know a lot of people are fans of Steve's design. And, uh, yeah, so then we got stuff like, you know, s simpler stuff, like headers. So here's, like, you know, a, a simple responsive header with a little, like, card popover sort of thing. and Or, like, this one that has kind of, like, we ripped this off of DigitalOcean. <laughs> Uh, we have to change a bunch of content still, but you can see it's kind of uh, got this little like announcement section and stuff like that. Or um, even like really complex stuff like um, like kind of big form layouts with like a sticky sidebar and like a, a sticky footer at the bottom uh, with all these kind of different, you know, control layout ideas that, you know, it's fully responsive and stuff as well. So a bunch of different options for those. So yeah, this is kind of what we've been, we've been working on. Um, so what Steve has been working on recently is uh, a bunch of pricing table stuff. Uh, so he's been kind of building out all these different responsive pricing table options. And yesterday, my friend Justin Jackson messaged me asking if we had built any of these yet because he needs one for the new uh, Transistor.fm marketing site. So he actually needs one like that's sort of like this style uh, where you have sort of like a feature table with a bunch of different options. So. I told him that I would try and build one for him this morning so that he can try it out on his site and uh, see how it actually works out for him. So today we are going to try and build uh, basically this. Steve is actually like, as we speak, we can like watch him. Here's his cursor. He's um, making some tweaks and stuff to support like an a annual monthly billing slider and some stuff like that. So. He's actually making changes as we'll be going, but we'll probably start with just like um, the mobile thing and uh, see how far we get. As far as like the timeline, we want to do like an early access by the end of the year. Steve says having another baby in November, so that might throw a wrench into the gears. But yeah, we're hoping like in December to be able to release what we have so far with the intention of still adding some more stuff and sort of have it feel really fleshed out and complete by probably, I don't know, the end of the winter sort of thing. All right, so um, let's start. So I don't know if I've got everything I need to do this. So I have like this, this whole thing is built as like a Laravel app and I've got this um, custom artisan command for making a new component. Uh, so we want to do it in the marketing category and it's going to be a pricing example and we'll just call it, um, uh, we're gonna do it with four tiers. So maybe we'll call it like four tiers uh, 
in four tiered table in card, something like that. And what this does is it, it uh, creates a new file in this components directory. Um, so you can see here, uh, that's just kind of empty. It's it's kind of like a markdown front matter format. So we have like a UUID for each component so that we can do upserts to the database. And uh, I'll give it a published out of today so that I can actually see it in the UI so it's not hidden. And then we just kind of like build everything in the markdown section of this markdown file, but just using HTML. And um, then we can kind of see everything. So uh, the way that this kind of works, if we want to kind of work on it, is we can just grab the file path and then I have like a special URL set up um, just for local development where I can, it's called this like workbench URL where I can just paste in the path to a component and uh, live preview it. So here's like what we have to start with, which is nothing. So, um, since we're doing like a mobile version, maybe we can, uh, is this, yep. We'll pull up like a dev tools here, give ourselves something that's like 375. It's kind of like a good size and maybe we'll pull this down so we can play with it a little bit, but still want to have some room to work. And uh, we should be able to just get like some live updates here. Now, actually, one thing that I just thought of is we're gonna need to make a new window for Figma. Uh, what the, what on earth is going on here? Did that break the setup? No, okay, so that's good. But now I cannot get back to that other window, maybe using my trackpad, okay. All right, so if we go here, we should be able to find where we were at. Wait for this to load up. And find our pages for our pricing sections. And we'll just scroll down to where Steve is over here. And I'm gonna hide the multiplayer cursors so that we can focus on what we're trying to look at here. Okay, so we'll go to like full size here and um, yeah. All right, so um, starting with some content, we'll just maybe drop in like these two pieces. So I'll just copy this. Pricing built for businesses of all sizes. Most of this content is probably stolen, but that's okay. Um, so we'll throw in an H1 here. And then under that, we'll have like a P tag. Oh, man, this is going to be rough that I can't easily tab to this other window. Um, what is a good solution for that? Do I have another version of Chrome? Is there a way in Chrome to so I can always show tabs, I think. Uh, I don't know. I'll just use the stupid trackpad to swipe between screens when I need to. And I'll just put it somewhere where I can easily reach it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, try for free. And this is going to be font size 24. So let's see what that would be. That would be like text. XL is 20, so 2XL, I think. And it's uh, semi bold. And we'll try and remember that. Semi bold and, oh, black. I wonder if that's intentional. There's no way Steve meant for that to be black. He would never do that. Okay, so we'll go font, semi bold, and we'll go text gray 900. And then this one is text gray 600, 16 regular. So we only have to really set the color. Text gray 600. Okay. Um, are we at 100% here? This seems 
Oh, you know why? Because we have to we have to zoom out here, I think. I swear we had, there we go. All right. So we're going to want to tighten up this letting, this line height. So let's go with like letting tight maybe. Yep. And we want some space between here, probably like an MT6 or something like that. So let's see what that gets us. Uh, four maybe. The top is cut off from the editor window. Uh, yeah, I think um, that's not intentional. Well, it's kind of intentional because I was trying to cut off like the menu bar here. Um, so maybe what I'll do is I'll just get out of full screen mode and that'll make my life easier in general, honestly, anyways. So we just won't use like the split screen view. We'll just maybe do like a two thirds sort of thing. This will be like good enough. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. So we need some space up here. So maybe we'll do this with just like vertical padding on the div that kind of holds everything. So we'll do like maybe like PY12 or something. How's that? Mm, maybe 10. And then it looks like we got some horizontal padding here. So we can kind of go doot, doot, doot. So that's eight, eight, four, twenty divided by four is five. Kind of a weird number for padding. Maybe we'll go with like PX six, a little bit more than Steve was using, but I think uh, it'll be okay. And then for the background color, he is using gray two hundred. So maybe we'll do the same thing for this. It feels like that's probably already two hundred. I don't know what we had set for the uh, body. Yeah, but we'll just keep it there anyways. Cool. Um, now, this line height should feel fine, but it kind of feels off to me. Okay. Now, Steve has this little like plan picker here, but I think we are going to... Um, not do it this way. Me and Steve were talking about this before I started this stream, and I think we decided that what well, a better approach is going to be to just show the entire card for each one stacked. It's going to make the responsive stuff pretty hard because it's going to be inevitable that we have to duplicate like these labels, for example. Um, but I don't think that's going to be the end of the world. So we're just going to start by trying to build out sort of this view. So let's think about the contents. We've got like. Uh, we've got a title for the plan and then we've got like the price and then like the sort of frequency of the payment and then like a p tag and then a button which will probably be a link so let's just do like a div maybe for like all where all the pricing sections are going to go and then we'll have like a div for the actual card and then that's going to have to have a div inside of it probably for um this padded area and then inside that we're going to have uh, basically this title this text this text and this link so I think we can now just do like basic and then I guess for this we will just do like a div with nine dollars a month and we're probably gonna want to wrap this in like a span Oops, and the other one in a span too, so that we can style them independently. I don't think I'm going to worry about this um, currency thing. Uh, okay, and then we got like a description of the plan underneath here. All the basics for. I kind of like, I kind of think it makes sense to have a period at the end there, even though Steve didn't have one. And then. Um, We'll have this link and we'll just set buy basic sure sublime man it's still the best editor but like notice how this indentation as soon as i hit enter like why does it go here should it not go here irritating no problem all right so maybe we can um 
do like a split screen view here and get some of this stuff a little easier. Okay, so maybe we'll do the card first. So it's got like a medium shadow on it. So we'll do like a shadow MD. It's got like rounded LG corners. And we'll probably give it a background color of white and then we'll just override that for like these headings. And then padding in here, one, two, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Again with the 20 pixel padding. So, I, I mean, maybe we'll just do what Steve says. So PX5 and then vertical padding he's got one, two, one, two, three, four, same thing. So we'll do PX5, PY5. I do these separately most of the time instead of just P5 because almost inevitably I end up wanting to change one of them slightly anyways. Um, so then I just have to change one instead of adding a new class. All right, so this is gonna be text gray 900 and font medium. In terms of ordering class names, that's something people ask about a lot. Some thing I've been trying to do lately, which I think has been working well, is trying to put uh, stuff that changes the size or layout closer to the beginning and stuff that's like more superficial towards the end. Um, so in this case where we only have to have two classes, font medium, which sets the font weight, that's actually going to change how wide this text is, right? So if I have to choose like which one of these should I put first, I put font medium first because that one actually has an impact on the layout, whereas the color doesn't actually have an impact on the layout. You can hold alt. So if I click this, so it's 19 pixels on the edge, or I can click this and then hover here and see 20. That's cool. That's useful. Um, thanks for that tip. All right, so here we got 30. So that's gonna be text like 3XL, font semi-bold, text gray 900. And then this is gonna be regular. So just the color we need to worry about here, text gray. Why have the padding on the child? If we put the padding on this element, that is this whole card, right? Now, when we went to build this block that had features in it, it would be this wide by default, right? Like the, the gray background would be relegated to this area because the padding would be on the parent. Um, so since we wanna be able to go full width for certain sections inside of here, we can't put the padding on the card itself. We have to kind of create these padding blocks inside of it. All right, so 600 in text size 14. So that's gonna be text small, text gray 600. And for this button, it's got a background color 800. It's got some vertical padding. Let's see, so what does this trick tell us in this case? Uh, uh, won't tell us, probably we'd have to zoom in. So we'll just eyeball it. We'll just start with like PY2 maybe. And I'll just say PX3, uh, even though there is, it's not really necessary to have horizontal padding because the text like doesn't hit the edge and it's supposed to be full width. Still think conceptually, it probably makes sense if it's there. And then we'll do like rounded LG probably. And we're gonna want text white. And the text is 14 and semi-bold. So we're gonna want text SM, font semi-bold. And I guess we'll just see what we get. I guess we'll just like pull both of these into a... Uh... All right, so not quite what we want, right? So we'll go block with full on this. Uh, text center. So we'll put that and maybe here. Where do I want text center to go? I don't know. It doesn't really matter. Okay. And 
all the basics for starting a new business. So that wraps in this case. So um, we're probably gonna wanna do a max width on that. So maybe we'll do like max width XS MX auto and see what happens. Is that gonna be small enough? Probably doesn't matter. <laughs> so we could just give it a width of like 56, see what that does. All right, so that's like a little bit closer to how Steve wanted it to wrap. And we'll do like the text center thing here too. Okay, and then for this stuff, we'll do text center. And then for the basic stuff, we'll also do text center. And then we're gonna wanna do some spacing. So, need a little bit more space above the description, probably a little bit more space everywhere. Like this is probably only needs to be like one. This probably needs to be like two. This probably needs to be like four. Just kind of just see what we get. That's pretty close, really. Close enough that I'm okay with it. All right, so um, we're gonna want some padding or some margin above this whole block. So maybe we do like MT6 here. Yeah, probably like MT10. Something a lot more significant. Yeah, that's probably okay. All right, uh, we don't have a hover style on this button, so maybe we'll just like make one up. Maybe we'll do like hover BG gray 700, just like uh, just make the background a little bit lighter, something like that. And then we'll work on this sort of table stuff below that. So, I'm trying to decide, I don't want to think too much about the desktop layout. I kind of just want to build the mobile one and then once we're doing the desktop one, we'll just kind of figure it out. Um, so let's start by adding a div here to keep the table stuff in and I guess we'll just build it as like a legit table. And I never remember all the, fancy table markup, MDN tables. Specifically for like when you wanna do this sort of thing where you've got like um, two kind of header rows, is there like a, a table group or something like that? Um, HTML table group, can you have multiple T bodies? Table, multiple, T, head. Let's see. It's kind of uh, quirky how this is done really because these are kind of like the real table headers, you know, when you think about it. Um, yeah, you can just do like a TH with a call span, but I don't think you're allowed to do like a TH here and a TH here. Like TH is supposed to go in a T head and there can only be one T head. So you could do it as like two tables, I guess. Um, it's just that like this doesn't really make sense as the head, like the TH cells anyways, cause the, the table header cells are meant to be like labels for the items, right? When in this case, like the labels are actually on the left, not above. So a little bit tricky. I wonder what we should 
what's the best solution? Because it certainly is like a table. It doesn't have to be a table. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what I'm thinking right now. Should we just do it as a kind of boring divs? The nice thing about tables is that um, everything kind of like adapts in terms of width, which is generally nice. Like things that work a little bit more flexible but yeah I don't know maybe we won't even make it a table uh, someone's suggesting do like a definition list but yeah okay let's let's just try doing two tables I guess it's some I don't know if it's semantically right for us to do it this way it's my only fear but that's okay so we'll do like a th we'll do like a call span two and we'll just say features t body tr td unlimited storage space and then we're going to get this checkbox so i'm going to export this checkbox steve made um so let's see, it's 14 by 10. Is that going to work in like a 24 by 24 hour board? Um, seems okay. I mean, yeah. Let's just make sure that we outline that stroke and delete the thing. And copy the SVG and SVG OMG. Paste it in. Grab. Ooh. The output it's invisible but it's probably still okay get rid of this I don't think we need the fill rule and clip rule because it's such a simple path let's just do like h6 w6 just see like does this even show up yeah so there's our check mark this is probably one of the tailwind colors too uh, I hope Green 800, green 700. We'll go with green 700. We'll get rid of this one so that we're not just using random colors. And get rid of this fill attribute here. All right. So that's something. So let's just uh, get some more of these in place. Uh, I guess I gotta grab this SVG too. Okay, and outline, delete, copy, optimize, copy. Duplicate this row. Replace this SVG with this one. Get rid of the fill. Get rid of the background. Get rid of the fill rule and clip rule. Get rid of this fill. Add some classes. And uh, did he use a proper color for this one? Let's see. Pool gray 400. Don't need any of this stuff. Leave. Okay. All right. So we got our two icons there. I think there is a plugin for Sketch for this. I just I'm so used to doing the SVG OMG uh, online that whatever it's fine. I'm still doesn't really slow me down. All right. Limited uploads. So we'll actually move this down here if we want to be true to Steve's design. What am I doing? Uh, get rid of that. Copy this. Paste that then. Additional team members. And API access. By the way, this is the most important. This shortcut is the reason that I use um, 
Sublime instead of Code. Being able to like have my mouse like anywhere here and do Command Shift A and select the text inside of an HTML element, so useful. I use it constantly. In VS Code, there's no way to do this. You can select either the inside of an element or the outside, but you can't just like always select the inside no matter where your cursor is. It's very frustrating. I don't know how anybody writes HTML without that keyboard shortcut. <laughs> All right, so features is gonna have a background color of gray 100. Uh, we're probably gonna have like PX5, PY2 or something like that. Uh, we're gonna have, um, we'll probably do like the, I guess we could do this stuff here. We can do uppercase. Tracking wide, probably. And then the text is 12, so it's really small. So we'll go text, excess, font, semi bold, and it's gray 700. And I, we'll probably got to do text align left because it's like centered by default here. And we got, are also going to have to make this table full width. So. All right, let's do text left. And then for this table, let's do class equals width full. Okay. And we're going to have a top and bottom border on this probably. Maybe just a top border. Two pixel gray border. So this BG gray we should move. Maybe like here. So we'll do border T2, border gray 200. I'm still figuring out my rules for ordering things, but it kind of makes sense to me that like, yeah, padding affects the layout, so that goes at the beginning. Border T2 affects the layout, so that goes at the beginning. Now border color doesn't affect the layout, but I kind of want the border stuff to be grouped together. So I'm gonna put that here. Um, this I probably want to put here. I don't know. I don't really care about the order that much, but everyone asks me all the time. So I'm trying to force myself to think about it a little bit more and decide what I actually believe. All right. So now we're going to have to do a bunch of gross stuff because tables are evil and you can't add classes to table rows or table bodies or any of that horrible stuff. So we're going to have to do all this awful border stuff on all these individual things. So let's just do border T2, border gray 200. This one will probably have like a border R2 as well. And then this one will have border T2, border gray 200. This is gonna be a monotonous stream, folks. Now, how are we going to get this padding to be how we want it? All right, so let's do some text styling here. So this is going to be text extra small, gray 900. Every editor sucks, again, with this indentation problem. Why? Why did it go there and not there? There's at least one show-stopping bug with every single text editor I've ever used. None of them are good. <sighs> All right. Okay, so we're gonna need a bunch of padding. So probably PX5 on this one, maybe like PY4, I don't know. We'll just kind of play it by ear. Seems pretty close. Maybe it's PY5 too. And then for these ones, I guess we're just going to do like really aggressive left and right padding because I don't see a sane way to actually, I guess it's like this width is really going to be driven by the padding um, on the elements with sort of like the longest content. 
So maybe we just do the same thing on all of them and just see what the result is before we um, before we get too carried away with trying to do really kind of um, specific stuff. Like it's already not that bad, really. All right, so let's get these classes duplicated. Now, if I was building this like for my own project, I would probably be using view. So I probably construct this table a lot more dynamically. But because I'm trying to build something that anyone can use, whether they're using Blade or whether they're using React or ERB templates or whatever, I'm trying to I'm trying to not like build everything with view or something and then have people not know how to translate that to what they're doing or kind of make things too complicated. So, all right. So kind of odd that these are, that, that they don't feel centered. I wonder if that's just because um, of how table layout works. So I guess on all these SVGs, we can do MX auto to kind of center those. Yeah, cool. And then for this next table, I guess, I guess we'll just duplicate this whole table. So we'll just select this a bunch of times, duplicate, hit up, enter. All right, so now we should have two of those. Yep. So we'll change this one to be uh, payments. And we'll call this fraud analysis. This is probably taken from Shopify or something. <laughs> we'll probably have to go through and change a lot of this content. It's one of the hardest things about designing components and stuff for people is uh coming up with fake content is so uh draining mentally i know steve hates it so he usually just finds like some design inspiration from somewhere and then just so we can focus on the design he'll just use the existing content and then we always <laughs> can never remember did we customize this content yet or is this still like the exact same content that uh we got from somewhere else Okay, so this is the same styles basically as this one. Okay, so let's just do um, some stuff here. So we'll say 2.0% and this is, I don't know if I actually said this out loud, but I was thinking before about whether or not the text styles belong on the TD or if all the text should be in a span. This is kind of a good argument for doing it in a span because the styles on the TD are never going to change no matter if we put a SVG inside it or if we put text inside it, but the text inside it has like a certain color and a certain font size and stuff like that. Um, now I guess you can make the argument that this stuff doesn't actually affect the SVGs either. So maybe we could just keep the styles up here. I think that's actually not unreasonable. So if we did this, that should, look like what Steve had. All right, cool. And then we'll do the same thing here. So I'll just copy this and paste over this. I guess we don't need the span now. So this is gonna be 2.7% plus zero. How do I type the sense character? HTML entity sense. Cool. And sent. Okay. So this is kind of weird that that's wrapping. I wonder, this is like a table layout thing again. Um, we'll have to figure this out. And then we'll do the same thing up here. 2.9% plus 30 cents. 
Column spacing got me messed up with the text VS icons. Oh yeah. So this is the thing that sucks about using two tables, by the way. Notice how this column is a tiny bit narrower than this column. Um, that's the beauty of using a real table normally is that like everything, it kind of locks everything together, right? So I do think that we're going to want to build this as like a single table. It's just kind of grim. So I think I'm going to get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this, get rid of this and this. It looks like we're missing a TR for these two, by the way. And we can maybe figure out like what is the semantic solution to our problem as a separate step. I'm just going to move the T-body stuff up here and we'll just do it all like this. So now that we have one table, these widths should match. Yeah, see like that all locks together properly. So now what I want to figure out is how can I make um, this stuff not wrap like if we just say um, white space no wrap Does that do it yeah so we'll do that for all this stuff now it's kind of sketchy because sometimes you might want stuff to wrap like if you have really long content in there um but that's okay we can think through that as a separate sort of thing so i'm just gonna make sure that we text center this stuff I think that's how Steve had it. Okay, so that's kind of like the start of something, I think. And it looks like we got like a button at the bottom re emphasizing the buy stuff. So after this table, maybe we just add that there and we'll copy this button. Kind of was afraid I copied some weird white space there. All right, so we can get rid of this. We can do border T to border gray 200. And probably like PX5, PY5 maybe. Is that kind of what Steve had? Yeah. All right. So here's kind of like the first one. Um, and obviously like when we get wider things are going to be a little bit funky um so what i usually do here is i th i look at like okay at like 640 that's like the next default tailwind breakpoint is this still fine or is this like stupid and in this case i would say like maybe this is just like a little bit too wide or maybe even just like the buttons is too wide so maybe we want like a max width on the button or something like that um let's duplicate this entire thing though and flush out these other cards and then we're gonna have to figure out how do we turn all this into like one unified table so I think Steve's design only supports three cards, but Justin needs four tiers. So I'm gonna try and build this as four. So we're just gonna sort of adapt what Steve's done a little bit as necessary. All right, so now we've got this uh, essential plan. Okay, so we got buy basic. I never do this, but I'm gonna do it in this case collapsing things in my editor. Uh, 
everything you need for a growing business by essential by essential so it looks like we get an extra check mark so let's uh let's copy this check mark and we'll override this one And then we got some better rates. 2.6%, 2.5%, And now for the next one, which is premium at 59, advanced features for scaling your business. This one gets green check marks across the board, so get those in there. And slightly better rates again, so 2.4, 2.4, 0 0.5. Okay, so we're gonna want some space between each one of these, so let's find where we first use the word essential. We'll find the start of that card. We'll do like an MT6 or something maybe. And maybe even more. Eight. You kind of want to notice when you get to a new plan when you scroll through. Let's go with eight. Steve can uh, tell me if he wants it different later. I'm just going to duplicate this one actually and delete the one that came after it so that I don't have to do all that annoying SVG stuff again. And this last one we'll call something else. Oh, we got some buy basic stuff that we forgot to replace. So maybe we'll call this last one like enterprise or something. And we'll make this like, I don't know. Two ninety nine a month or something, and maybe we'll add like a an extra feature. Let's make it the same, but after API access, maybe we'll add like um, dedicated support rep or something, and then we'll add this one to all the other ones, of course. but we'll grab the uh, dash icon, which I think is this one. And then we can paste this up here. HTML, man. Just slinging HTML, making a mess. Uh, did I miss it? Yep. All right, so let's see what we got. We got basic, no dedicated support rep. Essential, no dedicated support rep. Premium, no dedicated support rep. Enterprise, dedicated support rep. Oh, we forgot to change one button at the bottom here. Oh, two buttons. Enterprise by enterprise. Enterprise, okay, were all the other buttons right? So we got basic, 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 essential, 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 premium, 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 enterprise, enterprise, enterprise. All right, so if we were only building it for mobile, um, we could say that we're done. <laughs> uh, but this isn't great at this size. So why don't we try this in, uh, in the old Sizzy? I don't really use Sizzy that much for my actual work. I find it's really good for my screencasts um, because it's. I really love this like Zen mode, which is awesome when you're trying to have like not use up any unnecessary screen real estate. 
but I haven't quite gotten to the habit of using it for my day-to-day. -day. Okay, so it's good though, because I got like all Tailwind's breakpoints built in. So we'll go to Zen mode anyways. You can see, okay, if we jump to the small size, oh, crazy that it like synchronizes the scrolling even with like this window that's not even built into Sizzy. That's kind of crazy. Um, I don't even understand how that's even possible. <sighs> okay, so is there anything that we'd want to change at this breakpoint? That's kind of like the question I'm usually asking myself. And usually the, the solution is, usually what I want to do is I either want to make like this whole card narrower, but because in this case we have these tables that can have like quite a bit of content in them, I kind of feel like maybe that's not the best idea. Um, or maybe I just want to make certain content narrower. So maybe I want to make this like buy button narrower, but then you get to like the medium screen size and it's like, okay, well, should this still keep growing to full width or, or now is this actually so wide that it's actually making it harder to read because you have to read this label and then go all the way over here to read this. So, um, we might be better off like deciding like, you know what I think like we should constrain the width of this to something more reasonable so let's think that through so say we were just gonna try that let's see like how it feels say we we're gonna say like a max width of MD or something I wonder what happens all right so here's like a it's kind of like constrained right so even on large screen sizes, it stays kind of like reasonable. I think that's actually like not bad. I would argue that this button could maybe be smaller. So maybe if we just find all these buttons, how many is only four are selected? Uh, that's not, doesn't seem right. Let's grab just this stuff. Now we should have eight. Okay, so let's do like a max width XS MX auto on the button. All right, so now the buttons are a little bit narrower. They're still going to be full width like here. But yeah, I don't know, maybe this is better. Maybe it's not. I'll have to defer to Steve's expertise. All right, so what about like the headings? Um here they're like left aligned, everything kind of wraps. I think that's fine. Um, what do we want to do here? At this width, I kind of feel like everything kind of feels centered, right? So, but we also should test just like responsively. When you get to like just below 640, even here it kind of feels like you want things centered. Like 639, that's like another breakpoint I'll often check. It's like the one pixel before, like the biggest one. Would I want anything different here? And yeah, I think this alignment actually looks kind of kind of crappy. So honestly, I'd be tempted to to do text center for both of these just all the time even though that's not what's in Steve's design but I bet you he would agree after I showed him sort of the situation I was trying to resolve um, I kind of feel like this is too much space yeah this feels a little better to me now we only really need to worry about like at the very smallest is like 320. Um, this is like an iPhone SE or iPhone 5 size. So then at 639, like this still seems totally fine. 640 still seems kind of fine. Um, medium screen sizes. I don't think we're at a point where we could fit all four tiers yet. So I think we kind of just have to keep things the same. Um, but at large screen sizes, I, I think this is where we can try to make something happen here. All right, so let's think. This is gonna be one of those like gnarly components because I honestly can't think of like a really sane way 
to reuse a lot of the markup um, in both layouts. Like I think, I think we're going to inevitably have a lot of duplicated content. But maybe we can just like hide. Uh, it's tricky because like now we actually want like we kind of want this whole thing to be implemented as a big giant table, right? What is Steve doing for grids? He's not he's not following a grid here. So um, I was thinking if he had deliberately followed a grid, maybe we would just try and build this with like a bunch of columns uh, where we were saying maybe this is like, maybe this is like two thirds or something for the plans and then like one third for the descriptions. It's gonna be interesting. It's gonna be interesting. And we also have to account for four plans now instead of instead of three. All right, so why don't we just try and first get things like lining up next to each other. So we'll use Flexbox for that. So we're gonna say on LG screens, we're just gonna say max width full. So like there's no real max width problem anymore. And then we're gonna say LG flex. Okay. Sucks that these don't fit. Is that because the buttons have a width? Or the P tags have a width? Okay, so let's find these width 56s. Select everything in the quotes, go to the end and do LG width full. And hopefully that will prevent things from overflowing. Yeah, okay, so now everything fits. Okay, let's get rid of the MT8s on the cards of those sizes. So we'll select everything. We'll go LG MT0. Okay, so everything's kind of next to each other now. I think we want to hide this features thing. How do we want to do this? We'll just see what see what we come up with here. Let's let's get rid of the shadows on this stuff too, and like the rounded corners. LG rounded none. LG shadow none. So we just have like everything next to each other. I think we're gonna wanna do like LG border L2, LG border gray 200. Um, not quite though, because of this. Ugh. This is the part that's gonna be hard. Cause like what I'm trying to do right now is I'm trying to figure out, can I like just like reuse my cards to, to, to get this markup and then only worry about like sort of duplicating the stuff to fill out this section. But I'm a little concerned that that's not gonna be super straightforward to do. I think it's, I think we can figure something out, but it's gonna be sort of gnarly. Okay. So maybe what we need to do is just add a left border, a left and bottom border to here. Or maybe just a left border here, a top border here, and then left borders to all these. Yikes. All right, let's see what we can do. Um, Let's grab like this much. So we have that card and we'll just do LG border L2, LG border gray 200. All right, so now we got like the left border for each one of these. Now down where we have 
features, I think we're going to want to... How are we going to want to do this? <sighs> One thing I'm trying to figure out is like, okay, we're going to we need to like hide this table cell, right? But when we do that, um, we're going to need to make this take up two columns, but maybe not. Maybe if we hide all of them, it'll just become a one column table. Okay, let's grab all these, wrap this in a span, give it a class of LG hidden. This is going to be a disaster because that's going to lose the height. We could do like LG opacity zero. This is like really dark territory. Because <laughs> um, now like the text is still still in there can't seem to select it with the cursor but it, it is technically still there and we'd also have to do like LG pointer events none yeah we can add another table to the left but like the the biggest problem we're trying to solve here is like we actually want one table so that everything stays like kind of the way we need it to stay like in a perfect world I would just have this be like a TH or a TD with a call span of four or five in our case, right? And I can't really easily do that because of um, how everything is sort of set up. It's one of those situations where, um, it's one of those situations where like using a front end framework, you might not even use media queries and just like listen for resize events on the window and just render different HTML entirely based on the size of the viewport or um, or where you might just like literally duplicate all this content completely and just conditionally show like here's like all the markup for what we show on mobile here's all the markup for what we show on desktop that's probably honestly like the simplest way to do this um, but it's, it's hard to resist trying to be as efficient as possible with the markup, right? Um, but you do have to try and weigh that against like how, uh, how much that hurts sort of the maintainability of what you're trying to do. Because in a lot of cases, it is way simpler to just have like, okay, here's like really clean markup for mobile. Here's really clean markup for desktop. We just toggle between them and you just have to, if you want to add a feature, you have to add it in two places. Like, sorry, that's like the, the cost, you know? Um, there's that option or there's like what we're trying to do right now, which is like be very clever in reusing elements and all this kind of nasty stuff. Um, Cause like another thing I'm worried about honestly is creating this section because I'm going to need this to be the same height as these sections and these aren't all grouped together in a div. So I can't use like Flexbox to have this be automatically the same height. I'd have to do like something really nasty, like set an explicit height on this so that I could match that explicit height here or yeah, and then another thing is like, say some of this text wrapped and I would want these columns to get taller. Like there's no way to like make that just happen. So if I'm being honest, I think um, it's completely impractical to try and build this using the same markup. I think like the only sane way to build this is by basically building two completely different implementations and toggling between them. So that's what I'm gonna do. So let's undo a bunch of stuff here. 
basically anything that says LG dash we want to get rid of. So that we're just back to like this view, right? And then we're just gonna make this LG hidden. We're just gonna do this sort of like the, the awesome way, <laughs> dead. And then underneath, we're gonna build the desktop view and we're just gonna have that be visible only on desktop because it's just not realistic to do this in any other way. Okay. So here we're going to have a div. We're going to say hidden LG block. And this is going to be the desktop pricing table. So now we can just do whatever we want. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's figure this out then. So now we're going to start by making a table, probably with a class of with full. I don't think we're going to have like a proper table header because again, it's not semantically a header. Um, these aren't like labels for the columns. So I think I'm just going to do like a T body and we'll just kind of do it this way. So we'll have a TD, like an empty TD for the section on the left. Although I think Steve kind of was designing possibly some content we could put there. Like he kind of had this idea of maybe doing like this monthly annual billing picker over there. Um, no big deal though. And then we're going to have a TD, 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 TD for our four plans. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to try and just copy this stuff and see what we can fit in there. So let's see, is there going to be like a clever way I can grab all this? Say I grab all these and then I go doot, 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 doot. And then we go doot, 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 doot. Paste, reindent, save. Ah, uh, that didn't do what I wanted. Sad. Okay, no problem. I was hoping that uh, we could pa paste all those divs in some smart way, but it's uh, Sublime is not cooperating. Normally, if you have multiple things in the clipboard and you have the same number of cursors equal to the number of entries in the clipboard it'll paste one at each cursor but in this case it didn't do that it pasted all of them everywhere which is not helpful text editors are shit okay uh, let's go back to Sizzy. Okay, so we got to do that thing with the button width. Um, get rid of that. And I guess we don't really need this MX Auto. Wasn't the button width, sorry, the paragraph width. Okay, um, now we're gonna do white on, where should we do the white? Maybe just do the white here. LG, rounded LG. What shadow did Steve use for this? LG. Okay, all right, so that's something. Now we're gonna want some borders. So maybe we do like a left border on each one of these. So I'll grab like this markup. Uh, 
border L2, border gray 200. Slow on the reload today. Okay. Um, that's okay that we have that weirdness there. That's kind of expected. So let's add another table row under here. And this is where we're going to have like our TD that has like a call span of five. And basically we're just going to copy the styles for wherever we had this like features thing. Now we might have to look like Steve might have done the, um, oh, I should make sure I replace those THs with TDs too. TH. Cause we don't have like a table. Did that get the right things? Okay. Okay. So now this is going to be a call span of five. Um, the finished code, I'll, I'll think about what to do with it. Like it's going to be part of this Tailwind UI project, which is like a commercial project. Um, we'll definitely be having, giving away some of it for free, like for people to test out. Um, so maybe I'll do this one. I'll talk to Steve about it, see what he thinks. Um, but you can always meticulously follow along with the video too, if you wanted to. Okay, so we got our five column thing here. Let's double check that Steve is using the same stuff here. He very likely is. Okay, so now we're gonna do like um, all this other stuff. Like this is gonna be so easy compared to what we were doing before. Um, basically you just need to grab like, I think I can probably just literally grab like the, from here maybe down to here, paste that here. And then like duplicate this two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four, two, three, four. Oh yeah, you want to see my wrestling belt? Someone mentioned that. Check this out. So this guy I know, Austin, he's like the director of engineering at the WWE. And they use Laravel at the WWE and they've like benefited from my courses and stuff. So a couple months ago, he hooked me up with free tickets to go to WWF Raw and sent me this uh, replica belt as sort of like a thank you, which is awesome. Because uh, as a kid, I was so obsessed with wrestling. And this is like the one from like the mid 90s like era replica, which is perfect. The most like nostalgic thing ever. So it's pretty cool. Pretty stoked about it. All right, I'll put this down over here. All right, so um, this like is getting us places here. I'm surprised it is, um, uh, you know what's the issue is like this stuff is so, um, We're getting this um, really narrow column over here because of like the width of these columns. So we might just have to uh, do some trickery with like a, a min width on like the columns on this side to get things working. All right, so let's get like our borders and stuff in place and then we'll figure out like how can we get things to be sort of the size that we want. So it looks like we're mostly just missing like left borders on a bunch of table cells. So let's kind of just check here. We did a right border here. So I kind of think we should get rid of these right borders and just do pure left borders just so like we're consistent. So I'm just gonna select all these, get rid of that. And then here we'll do like border L2, 
we'll just kind of like paste those in. What am I doing? That's the wrong spot. Uh, here, 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 here. Hopefully I didn't do that somewhere else. I'm going to have to go look now. I should probably be able to see it in the... Okay, I think we're, think we're okay. All right. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this open here so we can kind of do some dev tool stuff. So what uh, this is the only thing I kind of don't love about Sissy is like the dev tools interactions are just like kind of shitty compared to real Chrome. Which I don't think is the fault of the tool. It's just kind of a limitation that probably they are have no choice but to deal with. So let's go to like um, 1024, which is like the smallest screen size where this is affected. And uh, we'll dock it on the right here so we can see a little bit more. And I'm just trying to understand. So is this because the word starting won't fit, I guess? So let's see, this TD is 204 pixels wide. This TD is 215 pixels wide. So I think the design kind of calls for all these to be equal, right? Which is gonna be an interesting challenge, but we can figure it out. So, okay, here's something I can never remember. Um, MDN call group. This is like how you, um, how you can like specify widths of like columns without just like putting it on an arbitrary TD, if I remember right. This is interesting. I didn't know you could do this. So if you put a class on a call group that applies to like the columns. I guess I mean I knew that for width, but I didn't think about that for like background color. That's kind of cool. Interesting. Okay. All right. Hover over basic. I'm not sure what you're talking about. All right. Let's try and uh, where are we here? Okay, so if we do like this, we've got, our plan is to have five columns, right? Two, three, four, five. So if I was to do like class, like width 64 on this column, is that gonna do something? Yeah, sweet, okay. So maybe what we do is, um, try some like uh, gritty stuff here. So let's think, like, what's a good way to divide up six columns or five columns? We could do, like, let's try this. One eighth for four of them. So that's not going to be enough. Let's do, like, one sixth and then two sixths for this one. Or one third. Okay, so this is kind of not terrible in terms of. I kind of want them to be a little bit wider. What is a good option for wider than one sixth? Three over twelve, which I guess is a quarter, but that's not really what we want. 
I mean, maybe a quarter actually is fine. I don't know. No, that's not going to work. What am I talking about? We have five things. Uh, math, 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 math. If we have 12 and we wanted to, to give four of them equal, the best I think we could do is f fifths. Let's just try one fifth for everything and see what that gets us. This isn't terrible. Like Steve is using like a much bigger screen size here, right? Like this is like, he's got like an extra hundred pixels that we don't have. But this isn't the worst layout I've seen. We'd, we'd have to figure out how to prevent this uh, text from wrapping awkwardly, which I think is more of a, uh, you just have to be tricky with your copy. So let's think here for a second is if we get rid of like the inspector and we're at like full width here, I don't think we're ever going to want to let it go to full width. Like we probably want to have, um, let me see. I have like a tailwind iframe config here. So I have these like max widths that I added, um, which I think will kind of be useful. Probably max width screen XL is probably what we want for Probably for this like whole thing. Um, max with screen XL, MX auto. So it's kind of like a container. We'll put like the PY10 and PX6 here and we'll just like make this like a background color container. We'll cut this, go to the bottom, we'll add a div, grab all these, indent these a little bit. Okay, so now like everything's kind of limited to Tailwind's like biggest screen size. Okay, so. Kind of, this screen size is kind of crappy, but like I, I can't see really a better option. All right, so let's think what we could do here. I feel like this is not the widths that I mean. Okay, so if Steve had to fit f f an extra group or an extra plan, he would probably be forced to do the same thing as me, but. I do think there's maybe an opportunity to do like something where we go a little bit narrower, like XL with one sixth and this one's two sixths. Like maybe on biggest screens, we can kind of do this, you know, so you have a little bit more space over there, which I don't think this is that crazy of a little scheme. Okay, so let's um, let's add this second row of like feature things. Probably the easiest way to do it is going to be to duplicate this section, like it's a question of what do we duplicate that will lead us to the least amount of things to need to change. And then I think we're still gonna have to like fine tune like like at this size right here, we get some awkwardness with wrapping and stuff, right? So we'll have to think through that a little bit. But this is generally okay. So I'm going to try and fix up um, some stuff up here. God, there's a lot of markup in here. All right, so all green at the top, then I think it was like 
this one should be a dash. So if we just grab like the one from dedicated support rep, that icon, then we can just kind of go through and, um, so this should be a dash, I think. This should be a dash. No, that one's not a dash. Let's see. Ugh, brain. Okay, API access should be a dash for the first two. So no API access, no API access. And then we want to grab the check mark and we want to do the dedicated support wrap for the enterprise plan. Okay. And then um, down at the bottom, we're going to make this say fraud analysis. online credit card rates yeah I can make the text smaller for the paragraph that's one thing that I was considering once I get all this um, kind of mock data updated we will uh, explore like what our kind of options are for keeping everything looking consistent there additional fees using all payment providers Okay, and then I guess we got to go and make up a bunch of data for this crap. Ugh. Okay, let's just grab one and copy it because uh, it's like this style. So if we paste that in, I wonder if that's going to like throw everything off or if that's going to be like, kind of close. So we're missing our left border. So what's this look like? Okay. So we'll do the same thing for one, two, three, four. Oops, don't need that space. HTML, man. What a riot. One, two, three, four. HTML is not, uh, it's an underrated skill. I don't know. Building up UIs and stuff. Front end development. Okay, so I guess I can just look here and we can kind of copy values over. Hello? I don't know. Couldn't tell if someone's knocking on my door or not. Uh, 2.9 plus 30 cents. 2.6. 2.4. We'll just keep that the same for the other ones. And then we got 2.7 plus 0. Two point five, two point four. And then we got 2%, 1%, 0.5%. Yep. Okay. Cool. And we'll just do the same thing for this. All right. Now we probably want like uh, bump up this font size like Steve did here. So he went to 36. So maybe we'll go like LG text. Is that four Excel? Let's see. Font size 36. Yeah. And then for this one, he went up to 30, which is 3XL. All right. And then it looks like we got some pretty heavy margin in between there. So all we need to do for that is find this desktop layout. Do like LG MT16 or something crazy like that. 
How's that? Maybe it doesn't need to be quite as big. 12. All right. And then we did have a button at the bottom too. So let's add another another row. I think I'll actually copy the first row for this. I think that'll probably be the the path of least editing. And then we can grab like this. Delete, 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 delete. And get rid of this. And I think we need um, a border top on these. And likely even on this one. And how's that button spacing down there? I think that's probably good. Okay, so I think that's kind of a table. It's been a long stream, so I think we'll just try and get um, get the rest of this stuff kind of looking decent at the smaller screen size. The thing that's tricky is um, in a perfect world, I, I would want this to sort of be like, hmm, you know what? Maybe my perfect world solution is achievable. Okay, um, this is what I want to be able to do, which I think actually might work. I want to just be able to declaratively say like this button should go at the bottom no matter what. And I think we can do all this with Flexbox because I think the Flex container will grow to fill the height of the div or to fill the height of the TD. So let's just see, for example, say I was to do like display flex and then flex direction column. And okay, so this is not full height yet, but now say I was to do height 100%. Please tell me it grows. didn't grow hmm. I'm very disappointed that I can't make something a hundred percent the height of a okay let's just say I was going to do like BG red 500 okay and I want this to fill the entire cell first question is like why is there like a one pixel of padding on the edge if i say w full h full no using stretch is not the solution the problem here is like it looks like there's no way to make a div fill a table cell CSS make div fill table cell. be screwed here. Yeah, using a separate row for the buttons is a totally valid idea, actually. 
That's a pretty good idea. I like that idea. I like that idea a lot. So like say I was to go to all of these table cells and I was to do a line top. Is this really not gonna work? Where's my align top class? Didn't I typed it, didn't I? Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. Okay. No problem. No problem. This one. So say we're gonna go here, dude, dude, dude. Align top. Okay, so now everything's top aligned, which is good. And the suggestion is to um I don't think you can do like display flex on a table cell. A table cell needs to be display table cell, right? Like if you look at the display value, table cell. Like that's kind of what I wanted to do. I wanted to be able to say like, okay, we'll make this flex and you know, then we'll do a uh, flex call and whatever. But now like you can see like this border is screwed up because like the the table cell has a display of flex, which it needs to be display table cell. Like you kind of wish there was like a display like table flex, you know what I mean? But for tables to work, the table elements have to be display um display table cell. Now we, we can't change the display type on TRs or TDs or any of that stuff without like making the table just not even work properly. That is uh, not an option. But what we can do is we can duplicate this row where we just have the buttons and we can go up here, select this row, paste the buttons in below and like was suggested by Miko, who is the true hero of the day, we can um, put the buttons in a separate row, get rid of the borders, and then they'll be at the bottom. It's just like good old uh, table layouts from back in the day. So that's pretty exciting. So if we get rid of this, do, do, do. And then we get rid of this one too. Don't need any classes on this one. And then we get rid of all those buttons. Now the only thing I would be nervous about, which is just like something we'd have to explore is how does this affect like the order that content is read on screen readers? Cause you kind of want like this by basic button to feel like associated with this, you know? Um, but what can you do? We'd have to figure that out. Kind of would take some experimentation. So I'm going to change these to just have a PT of five. So now everything kind of stays where it's supposed to. Yeah. So there you go. That's like this insane pricing table. In only almost a thousand lines of HTML. Um, but yeah, cool. All right, so we've been going for like close to two hours. So I'm going to uh, shut her down here, I think. Um, I'll probably uh, talk to a couple of friends of mine and get some tips if there's any uh, thing I could do to improve this, maybe test out the screen reader stuff. Um, see what we can do. I do find it a little odd how this one wraps, but I guess if it doesn't fit there, it doesn't fit there, right? But yeah, this works. So there you go. Uh, so thanks to everyone from uh, for checking out the stream and uh, hopefully I'll stream some more of this type of content in the future as I keep uh, hacking on these components. All right. See you, everyone.